What is happening, ladies and gentlemen? Happy Monday. I'm using my not so awesome uh, MacBook camera. So I'm sitting right in front of a window. So that just goes to show that good lighting can make a crappy camera not so crappy. So you may have heard the news that broke last week. Instagram announced that they're going to be rolling out a test phase of being able to remove like counts and video views from Instagram. So why would they do that? Well, there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, um, they want users to be more engaged in the content, not the amount of views or likes the piece of content does. They believe that that's an opportunity to really engage with people and content that you care about. Now, as far as um, when this is all going down, well, first of all, they're removing them because, you know, especially millennials, teenagers specifically, I have one, um, are so caught up in, I think we all are to a certain extent, so caught up in the, in the fact of um, what, what type of traction the content's going to get versus just creating a piece of content because you find it valuable and you think that the people within your community and network are gonna find it valuable as well. I think it's brilliant because kids this day and age, specifically teenagers and millennials, um, are, are living their, you know, their, their, their lives and starting to form their identity based on how many people are liking a picture or how many people are watching their video or their Instagram story or their Snapchat story or, or whatever the case may be which I think is ludicrous. But then again, I didn't grow up in this generation. I didn't grow up with one of these in my hand. I grew up with one of these on the wall with a cord. We had to stand there, make a phone call. We had to stand there the whole time with a phone attached to a wall with a wire, like some, cord, some sort of animal. So I don't know what that generation is like, but I have raised a daughter that is, um, that is, somewhat obsessed with social media. YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, namely. She just joined Facebook and she just turned 18. So that gives you an idea um, of the demographics that are hanging out here on, on, on Facebook. Um, but I read an article over uh, the weekend that said they're gonna be rolling out this, they announced it at the F8 uh, Facebook uh, Annual Developer Conference last week. Um, Adam Lasseri is the CEO of Instagram said that um, they will test hiding the number of likes and views that photos and videos receive a central aspect of its platform in an effort to rein in competitive tendencies and make the experience a little less pressurized. Change is designed to minimize the stress of posting online where users can fixate on how many likes their videos draw. You know, I say this constantly in, uh, in my talks and that is, you know, we are, we're, we are, digitally addicted to this thing like digitally addicted no the average human is not more than three and a half feet away from their phone at any given time so that's that in and of itself tells us that we're digitally addicted and here's right let me walk you through it and just like i do in my talk so we post something and then we sit and we wait for that first like or that first comment that gives us that shot of dopamine that goes right to our brain that goes i'm awesome feeds the ego it's all it's all ego based right so when I heard about this last week I was ecstatic because if you take away likes and comments what do we have with social media we've got content that we observe now granted commenting is completely different you know, again there's some negative aspects bullying harassment things of that nature that could go that could, that could happen with commenting but I think it's a dual-edged sword really right You're, you got Everyone fixated on how many likes, comments, or video views that they're or likes and, and, and video views that they're getting on one aspect, on one end of the sword. The other end of the sport, sword are comments, right? So good, bad, or indifferent. A lot of them negative, a lot of derived out of some sort of negative context that internally, you know, kids are committing suicide and people are making poor decisions and their self esteem is shot and they're building their identity based on social media. I don't think it's just, I don't think it's just. Teenagers, I think it's 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 everyone, right? Because we've all got an ego, right? We we all have different ways of checking that ego and, and how we you know absorb and consume information. I don't care what comments are there. Um, to me, it's about creating content that provides value 
because I see and feel the value in it. That has nothing to do with selling what I do. And I feel that if it impacts me, I want to share it with others. So that's the reason. And I feel like there's never been an easier time to document and storytell ever. Right before when we story told and, 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 and wrote articles and created content, it's way back when. When did it start? Well, it started when print press, right? So when newspapers and magazines first started coming around, being able to produce content and advertisements for brands and, and, and uh, uh, editorials and things for people to read value-added content. Back then, you had to buy the magazine, consume the content, and that's all that there was, right? So then came radio. Then came TV. And now came the internet, right? So there's been these different phases, of, but before... That's all we had. Early 1900s, or late 1800s, print. Early 1930s, radio. 40s and 50s, television, right? Then the internet came around in the 90s, 2000. People thought it was gonna be a fad. They thought this was gonna be a fad. It blows my mind. But I don't think there's ever been a, a more, uh, an easier way, rather, to engage with content um, and to either tear it down or build it up than it has been now because social media allows us to actually go in and engage with the content. Now, if you were going to criticize an article written in the LA Times or written in the Saturday Evening Post, uh, you know, 35 years ago, you could send a letter to the editor. You could maybe tell your circle of friends, your friends, neighbors, and those that are in your sphere of influence uh, about what your thought and perspective was on that Saturday Evening Post article. But that's as far as it really went. Maybe you could write another article in a different publication about what you did or did not like about it. But that, as far as the criticizing is concerned, that's pretty much it. That's all you could go. So um, if you heard something in the radio back in the 30s or 40s that, that really ruffled your feathers a little bit and got you all twisted, what could you do? You could tell your coworkers about it. You could tell your friends about it. Um, but there's no way to actually jump on that radio show and comment and like and for people to go and look, how, how did they judge whether or not a show is successful? And they still do to this date. It's ratings. How many people have tuned into the radio show? How many people have tuned into the television show? It's a whole different ball game now. We've got this long form content, right? Why do you think Netflix is going all in with movies? And who's on deck to do the same thing? Apple, because they know the days of us throwing the family in the car, driving to the movie theater, buying a bo bucket of popcorn, sitting through 25 minutes of previews just to watch our favorite movie. Will that ever be phased out? Probably not. It's the experience. However, if I don't have to wait and I can watch the whole season in one weekend with one tub of Haggadahs and I don't have to leave to go anywhere, they get that. They get the frictionless environment of content. But circling back to the original topic here, I don't want to go off on tangent. Look, squirrel. Um, but the reason... Instagram is doing this is I believe they're really trying to, to you know to, to go back in time a little bit as far as how content was consumed before because even if you saw a television show and didn't like the television show there's nowhere to actually voice your opinion publicly there's nowhere to get on there and go that show sucks there was nowhere to do that now my goodness even if you don't watch The Bachelor of which I don't but my Daughter does, my sister does, and every other female on the planet does. And if you don't know about The Bachelor or Game of Thrones, two shows that I do not consume whatsoever, but I feel like I know a lot about them just based on the way people are talking about them. See, that's the, that's the fundamental shift that we're in right now and that we've been for the past 15 years is that news and information, we used to have to go look for it. Remember that I'm dating myself a little bit here, but remember when our fingers did the walking through the yellow pages? We had to go look for news and information. Now news and information comes directly to us. It's everywhere. We can't avoid it. We can't dodge it. We can't get away from it. We'd love to, but we understand that it's coming directly to us like a fire hose, <laughs> literally. So with that being said, we choose carefully as to who we like to follow, brands we like to follow, people we like to connect with, and content that we like to consume. But it's going to be 50-50 with content forever, I believe. 50-50 uh, in that you're going to please 50% of the people with your content and you're going to piss off 50% of the people with your content, specifically with religion or politics or you know uh, alternate views or w whatever the case may be, you're never going to get everybody on board uh, to fully be on the same page and agree at all. That's really what makes the entire human race very, very interesting is that we're all different and we all have different opinions. But I find it so fascinating that Instagram said, wait a second. 
maybe we can remove one of the most fundamental tools that we have on our platform, the ability to say, I like this. Remove it from the general public. Now you as a, as a creator, you as your, if you post something, you're able to see how many likes that you get. You're able to see how many video views that you get from my understanding based on the research that I've done on the announcement next week. But the consumer's not. And I go back to that Andy Warhol quote that I constantly use. I'm gonna have to look it up uh, because I always paraphrase it. But it said something like, don't worry about what the beholder has to say about your content. Just keep creating, right? It's not your job to judge what you think, what we think, right? That story, that racket, that tape that's running in our head that isn't even true because we wrote that story, we made it up. We want it to be true, but it's not. We create that racket in our head going, you know what, our con my content's gonna suck. Everyone's gonna hate it. They're gonna make fun of me. Or they're gonna like and they're gonna comment or they're going to, uh, they're going to, uh, I don't know, I have no idea. Fear of looking bad is all this comes down to. It really, really does. And, it, and that's ego driven. That is completely 100% ego driven. Um, another thing, the article, uh, it's the rolling, so the rolling this test out in Canada first. I have to see how our Canadian friends react to it. Um, I'd be interested to see why they chose to start there. Uh, in the test run, which will roll out in Canada this week, the Facebook owned site will display user posts as it would normally, but people scrolling through the feed won't see like counts. Account owners will still be able to check the tallies on their own photos and videos by clicking through a prompt, um, but you won't. Uh, but the public will not be able to actually go see those. Um, so, psychological drawbacks of social media use have gained more attention in recent years, with parents, consumer advocates, and even tech companies pointing to its potential to increase anxiety and social isolation. Technologists have also taken issue with popular social media platforms that place engagement metrics at center stage, encouraging users to maximize those figures by spending more time on the site and perpetuating a feedback loop of notifications and social, social validation. That, help, that happens a lot too. You'll go in, you'll create a piece of content that you're really proud of. Maybe it's a new video, maybe you went live, maybe you posted something on Facebook, maybe it's an image, I don't know what it is. And then you reach out and you want people to actually go share it. So you'll send a link and you go, hey, would you mind sharing this for me? I've done it before too, but I feel kind of icky when I do it because I think, you know what, if this person wanted to share this piece of content, they would have already. Um, but then the other side of me says, well, maybe they didn't see it. So, you know, the algorithm, you know, you're only seeing 10% of the people that you're actually engaging with based on however Facebook decides their algorithm is going to operate pertaining to getting information to you on your newsfeed. So it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. But I, I keep coming back to that same question. Wow, if Instagram, if all of social media didn't have likes or didn't have comments, what would we have? We'd have a bunch of stargazers and content creators, and that would be it. The conversation would be offline about content that's online. So riddle me that one. And listen, Instagram's hot right now. Facebook's hot right now. Why? Because they've stayed ahead of the curve. Facebook would have been taken out had Snapchat been able to really accelerate at the growth they were accelerating at, and they still may be. I don't know, I'm not a Snapchat user. I gave up on them. Their UI sucks, it's terrible, hard to navigate through, and I'm not looking to connect with teenagers. I've got one of my own. I love it with everything that I've got, but that's not really my audience per se. I'm not selling podcasts. I'm not selling content. I'm not doing any of that jazz pertaining to um, on Snapchat. So I'd like to think that 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 um, that being able to um, that being able to um, uh, just consume content without engaging in it is going to is going to make for a very very interesting conversation. So um, I got th some of this, these details here. There's a there's a, a plethora of, um, of of news stories on um, Instagram testing out removing of likes. Uh, it's that that this stuff's constantly changing on a daily basis. Um, I heard a few few years back that that Facebook is constantly changing. Remember when they would redo, they just rolled out a new update uh, with their app, but they would come up with a brand new layout. People would lose their noodle about Facebook rolling out new changes. And I heard someone say um, that you know, Facebook constantly changes um, all of these things so that we don't screw them up, okay? Mainly marketers, okay? Mainly marketers, because marketers mess everything up. We get in there and you know something's really, really good and we just get in and just, you know, 
every, everyone's a marketer, everyone starts utilizing it, next thing you know, it's kind of lost its pizzazz, if you will. Um, this article was on the, uh, was on the Washington Post is where I connected. I will, um, I will drop a link here in the comments. Um, I found this interesting too. It says, hiding the counts could potentially inter introduce new problems for users, such as diminishing the feeling of camaraderie from liking a popular post tied to a social cause or massive in-joke. While we focus on the negative side of comparing likes, it's also true that people enjoy the game of supporting a post, a friend, or an influencer. Um, Instagram isn't alone in trying to tamp down on the seemingly endless quest for likes and new followers. Uh, Twitter chief exec Jack Dorsey said last week that if he could build his social network all over again, he would rethink its emphasis on likes and retweets as the marker of success. And I completely agree with that. If, if, if pl these platforms that are here can judge their success based on the amount of content that's being created um, at the forefront and then engagement really being secondary, I really think that that's, 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 that's a component that we didn't first look at to be, you know, second. We didn't look to say, wait a second, maybe the engagement aspect of all this content is 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 the latter part of this. The, the core focus of social media is an extension of branding. It's where the eyeballs are at. It's become the new television. It's become the new radio. It's become the new billboard. It's become the new direct mail piece. Oh, and by the way, you're a, you're able to engage with that content and build communities around that content. But how do you filter through the negative stuff? But there's always going to be negative things there, I guess. But anyhow, I just wanted to um, have a quick conversation about what's taking place with the new Instagram uh, removing likes test that's rolled out now as we speak in Canada. And it'll be exciting to see um, if it sticks and if it's there. So if you have any questions um, about what this is, what this is all about. I'd be more than happy to, to try and answer them for you. Just go ahead and drop them uh, right below in the comments. If you found value in this, just hit share and go, yo, my boy Sebastian was talking about Instagram removing likes. What? Um, and I'd really appreciate that too. You see what I mean? Encouraging people to share content, but you're already watching this right now. You're already engaged in the content. So you're a good, you know, uh, you're, you're, you're a perfect target to be able to say, Hey, by the way, do you mind sharing this? Not just some random, which I may too. And I may share it later on. Again, some, some people may not see this, but if I send it to them, they will. So remember, podcasts suck if you don't have one. This is a really crappy camera on my MacBook, but um, my shirt's not backwards like it normally is on my phone. So we just went live here from the office on this lovely Monday morning. We just posted up here in a little booth. So anyhow, hope you guys have a fantastic Monday, and um, talk to you soon.